I've been a vegetarian for over a decade now, which means I have one simple rule. I don't eat anything with eyes. Except potatoes. But being a veggie, I find everyone has opinions about what I choose to put in my mouth. And they love to share them with me. Like the guy on the bus who said, that's not healthy. Or the woman at the dinner party who exclaimed, good on you. Like the only way to save the planet is to stop eating meat. Why would you be told off? by another party goer from across the table. That's not true. Fake meat uses heaps of water and it's just as bad for the environment. So what's the truth? Is going plant-based better for the planet? Or are we stuffed no matter what we do? Like a lot of things in this world, the answer is complex, but it's a simple yes if you look at environmental impact. And is it better for the animals? Obviously. But what about the health benefits? Well, kind of. I mean, that entirely depends on how skilled you are at meal prep. These are the Courtney facts. I think it's pretty well known that we are a country of hungry meat eaters. We love a steak. In fact, the average Aussie eats 89.6 kilos of meat per year and drinks more than 95 litres of cow's milk. Sounds like a lot of busy cows. Us vegos and vegans get a bit of a bad rap for being smug about our choices. Which can make things a bit awkward at a family barbecue. But science tells us that we're in the right. Because according to the UN, the global livestock industry accounts for 14.5% of man-made greenhouse emissions. And those busy cows we were talking about? Well, they're some of the worst culprits. Bovine burps release huge amounts of methane into the atmosphere. <laughs> It's clear the food system is a major driver of environmental resource use and pollution. Marco Springman is a professor of climate change, food systems and health at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine and a senior researcher on the environment and health at the University of Oxford. It's responsible for about a third of all greenhouse gas emissions and the majority of those are related to the uh, production and consumption of animal source foods. Back in 2018, his colleagues did a huge research project looking at this issue. My colleague Joseph Poor looked at life cycle assessments from 38,000 farms uh, and um, at 40 different commodities and found that livestock products are the ones that have the highest environmental impact. Wait, 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 just because of cow birth. No, it's not just about being gassy. It's about use of water and land too. Let's check out some numbers. Here's the water footprint, carbon output, and amount of land needed to produce beef, chicken, and pork. And here's tofu, chickpeas, and lentils, which are the protein sources for things like the plant-based burgers that are popping up in the supermarkets. Changing dietary patterns away from high meat, high dairy consumption towards more plant-based diets is one of the biggest levers for reducing environmental impacts. And that's backed up by this year's report from the UN's Climate Change Panel which said that moving towards plant-based diets provides us with a great opportunity to battle climate change. <laughs> but what about old mate at the dinner party who said meat and dairy alternatives are just as bad for the environment? Well, it's true that not all alternatives are created equal. Almonds need heaps of water, so you'd be better off having a soy or oat latte given the choice. But according to that research from Oxford, it still uses less water than cow's milk. If we compare across food commodities, then most of the time animal source foods uh, have uh, about a 10 times higher uh, water footprint than plant-based foods. There are surely exceptions. So some uh, nuts, for example, use lots of water. Some fruits and vegetables use lots of water. But very often water use is a very local problem that is accentuated by poor water rights, poor uh, land planning. Environmental regulation is very often behind this, actually. Okay, but what about moving food around. I heard that that can have an impact too. It can, but in Australia we're spoilt for choice when it comes to locally grown fresh produce. However, some conscious decisions can help to reduce your impact too. I mean, for example, when oranges are out of season here, they're often imported from places like Egypt. If we went plant-based tomorrow, would there be enough agricultural land to feed us all? We actually calculated that if everybody were to go vegan, uh, there would be a net saving in cropland use. And the reason for that is that at the moment, uh, about a third of all staple crops are fed to animals. So if you free those up, uh, you would have plenty of land available, not only to grow the increased amount of fruits and vegetables and legumes and nuts and seeds you, you should be eating, but also still land available to uh, free up for nature conservation, for example, or to a, a forest. But is going plant-based actually healthier? Well, yes, but as I said, that's much more complex. We know that most Australians aren't achieving um, their fruit and veggie targets. In fact, a very small percentage of us are. So 
even the message of just increasing plants in whatever type of diet that you prefer is a good message. Nicole Diamond is an accredited dietitian from Dietitians Australia. We know that people that have um, like a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet or a diet that's higher in plants um, have a lower risk of health conditions like cholesterol, um, high blood pressure, the risk of chronic disease like type 2 diabetes, that sort of thing, and, and improved gut function just because they're getting more nutrients and fibre um, and that sort of thing in their diet. But that doesn't mean a plant-based diet is perfect. But it can be unhealthy as well, depending on those dietary choices. I think it's important to keep in mind that meat-based foods do contribute a lot of essential nutrients to our diet. So things like iron, zinc, calcium, iodine, uh, long chain omega-3 fatty acids, things like that. So we need to really, not just if we're going vegan, just cut out the meat from the diet and just start, start eating vegetables and salad. We really need to replace that source of protein in the diet. There's an often cited study that shows people who go plant-based have a higher risk of bone fractures, but researchers admitted that they didn't know why that was and said that some more studies needed to be done. It could just show the importance of making sure you're eating a variety of foods. If it's not planned well, um, it could be made up of a whole bunch of processed vegan foods and things like Oreos and stuff like that. So it's not always necessarily um, healthy just because it's vegan. And what about the notorious smugness we were talking about earlier? That isn't something you can exactly measure, but animal welfare is a big factor for many. In Australia, there are quite strict regulations on animal treatment, but practices in the dairy industry still include separating calves from mothers and cages for egg production are still used. Australia's peak animal rights group, the RSPCA, advocate for changing these practices. And they are examples that vegans often cite for not consuming animal products. I think one of the complications here is that there's lots of different ways that people assess morality. Um, and it kind of comes down to two different things. So there's differences in the way people have an, as an ethical framework, how they assess whether something is right or wrong. Um, and then as well as that, there's differences in the kinds of things people value that get input into these ethical frameworks. Kate Lynch is a philosopher from Sydney Uni. A lot of the time when people disagree, it's because they have these dis different ways of evaluating ethics. And I should also say that these calculations are often context dependent because some of the values that we care about would be things like cultural values. Food has um, very important cultural values for some people. Um, and also when it comes to kind of socioeconomics and health, uh, even if you believed in principle that following a vegan diet is going to be kind of the best thing for the environment and the best thing for animal welfare, the truth is it's a lot easier for some people to follow that diet than others. Kate's right. There is a certain level of privilege required when going plant-based. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there are social and cultural factors. Not all of us are necessarily in a position to go meat-free. And the industry itself contributes significantly to the economy and is a large employer. So we're talking about people's livelihoods here. But most experts say that the best thing to do is at least reduce your meat and dairy consumption. And speaking from experience, it's becoming easier with more and more plant-based options appearing in supermarkets and in restaurants. But Marco just says to do what you can. If you can't go completely plant-based, don't be uh, ideological about it. So any reduction really matters there. If you every once in a while eat a, um, a piece of meat or some dairy, then that's okay as long as you keep it within uh, proportions. So try to maybe be veggie or vegan for most parts of the week uh, and see how you can go with it.